Hey guys, Toby here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the new sculpt mode paintbrush. While in the background, there's going to be a time lapse of a three-hour speed sculpt of this cute Afro girl by Ahiz Lotus Streets, just to keep your eyes busy. And I'm kind of late on this topic, and I just can't not talk about it. And maybe there could be someone watching who doesn't know about it. So, all right. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get alerted whenever I release new videos. Now let's dive right in. So we probably all know that a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, Blender officially released a new installment in the Blender 3 series, which was 3.2. If you didn't know, now you do. Yay for you! Alright, so of course it came with some new stuff like the improved caustics and the light groups, of which I know nothing about either, but it also came with the big new bad boy, which for some reason isn't on the front page of the website, the sculpt mode paintbrush and the new color attribute data form, format, whatever. It's also different from the vertex paint mode and vertex colors. With these tools, you can now apply color data to each vertex of the mesh, making you able to create color texture data without the topology you visit. <coughs> oh. Alright, so I know I was just exactly describing what vertex color is, but I promise it's really different. Alright, to start with, rather than having that lame old vertex paint mode that we know and don't love, with its limited settings and all those problems. We have a tool in sculpt mode with various new settings to influence how the brush affects the color attribute data. I feel like its appearance in sculpt mode is done partly because being able to add color to rough dense topology is usually a tool for sculptors. So its natural habitat or whatever should be in sculpt mode. With that, I can see Blender sculpt mode is getting more like ZBrush. Watch out boys, we're coming for you. Now that's the least close thing to ZBrush among the perks of the paintbrush. Now remember how there's this setting to remain masks, to retain masks when you remesh? Well, <laughs> I didn't until two weeks ago due to my lack of attention. Well now I know, because that setting is now active by default in Blender 3.2. Why am I bringing this up? Well, there is a new setting which is also active by default in Blender 3.2 which does exactly the same thing but for color attribute data. Isn't that amazing? And do you know what that means? That means that we can put color on our sculpts earlier knowing that as we progress and add more detail by remeshing we will still retain the color and we can keep going from there so up we can do more zbrush like pipelines that some zbrush users use for example people like polygon and others so that's amazing there are perk there are good things that come with being able to put color on first i feel like if you are able to put in the skin tones very early on it helps out with the proportions of the face and that would do a lot of good. Not to talk of the amount of comfort and confidence that it gives some sculptors seeing color on their sculpts early on as they keep moving and progressing. Now from there we have something that rivals ZBrush's polypaint. Now to the real money maker, the real bad boy. When I'm talking about the real bad boy, I'm talking about the speed. In comparison to vertex paint mode, paintbrush is light speed. It handles large amounts of polys well with minimal lag experienced, leading to a smooth, smooth, enjoyable painting experience and the confidence to raise the poly count for cleaner sculpting and painting. When using the old vertex paint mode, there were always these laggy, like it was always so laggy even with surprisingly small poly counts. I'm pretty sure that with a careless poly count, it is just But 
but now with the new tool you can paint on extremely dense meshes with even better performance than texture painting personally i'm going to try a new texturing workflow for complete characters whereby instead of painting on image textures and experiencing that lag which i do not know where it's coming from i think i'm going to just take my mesh my character mesh duplicate it then subdivide it heavily and i'm going to paint on it using sculpt brush sorry sculpt mode paint brush then i'm going to see if i can bake the color into an image texture I'm not really sure if that would actually save time or even spend more time but at least it gives you an enjoyable painting process you'll be able to flow to get a feel for the pathways flow like this i'm going to experiment with that maybe even in one of my videos and i'll give you guys feedback if it was worth it how much time it spent if i'm going to do it again or if it was a failure anyway experimentation is part of life alongside the paintbrush another color attribute influencing tool is the color filter which is added to the filter section of the sculpting brushes and tools have you ever wished that the vertex paint mode had a feel tool or have you ever had those moments where you don't like how the colors are looking and you're like oh, i'll just have to do it during shading well that's where the color filter tool comes in the color filter tool has various filter types fill hue saturation value brightness contrast smooth red green and blue and using those various filter types you can you can influence the corresponding property of the color data all over the object all you need to do is you click and you slide so if you haven't gone up to blend 3.2 for whatever reason or the other <coughs> awesomeness phobia you gotta do so right now and try out the new scope mode paint brush you definitely love it if you want to know more about the plans for blender 3.3 and other future versions the blender peeps released a video which i might link in the description if i remember to but from what i remember the whole painting thing is gonna be changed Texture paint mode and vertex paint mode will be removed and replaced with a unified paint mode. In this mode, the same way you can normally choose which vertex color, data, or texture image you're painting on, you'll be able to do the same, but I think all in the same mode or something. I can't clearly, I can't clearly remember all they said, so I might just be filling with baloney. So it'd be beneficial if you checked yourself which is more of a reason for me not to fail you in the description so um i think that's the end of my rant uh, i feel like for anyone who's using zbrush and doesn't feel like he's earning as much as would make zbrush worth it or anyone who's contemplating um starting digital sculpting and is not sure if he should buy ZBrush or if he should move to Blender. I feel like this is the time to move to Blender because it's so awesome right now and I know it's only going to get better and better. I mean, imagine, I can't imagine myself jumping into ZBrush. I'm not bad mouthing ZBrush. ZBrush is a powerful tool, but I can't imagine myself jumping into ZBrush even after years of sculpting. When I finally get enough money to come to start paying for ZBrush, I'm not really sure I jump on the ZBrush train because even the interface is something really scary. I don't know. Just like seriously. Look at the smile on this girl's face. It's it's only Blender can make someone as happy as this. Alright, bye. Have a nice day, evening, night, life. Bye. 
and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I release any more videos. Bye.